So here's the way I'm going to unfold for you how mathematical induction begins and then therefore how a normal, a normal proof is structured. Okay. So here's what I'd like you to do. Um, I'd like you to make a little subheading of an example. Because this is the idea. What does this look like? Consider. I'm going to come up with a result that we all agree upon, that we get, we can access through another means, so that once I do it, it will be without a doubt, yes, this must be true. But I'm going to do it in this fashion. Okay. So I want you to consider this series. This series is no ordinary series. What is this a series of? It's the series of the first n odd numbers. Okay. And you've got the nth odd number over there because it's the first, second, third, etc. Okay? So this is the sum of the first n odd numbers. Now you guys know, because this is a particular kind of series, you have tools to deal with this, right? But just for a moment, just suppose you didn't. How could I work out what is going on? Well, I am going to try and take a small number of cases. Okay? So I'm going to say, well, what's the first n terms? It's just going to be 1. That's the first odd number. What about... If I take the first two odd numbers, I'm going to have 1 plus 3, which is 4. four. You say, okay, I don't see a pattern yet. Let's have a go at the next one. 1 plus 3 plus 5. Now I'm starting to get oh. suspicious. And then if I do one more, the next term, which I haven't written, is 7. right? So I'm getting this. Okay. So what I do is I make a conjecture. I think I can see a pattern here. I would like to apply a generalization. I'm going to conjecture that the entire sum, right, of all n terms, however many that might be, I conjecture that it's n squared. Okay. So how do I go about proving this? Well, I could go ahead and develop all the theory to do with arithmetic progressions and so on and so on and so on. But I'm going to try it a slightly different way. I'm going to use mathematical induction. So, here's the way this works. There are three steps to it, and they correspond to one, two, three, kind of. Okay? Firstly, I just want to make sure that my conjecture, I'm going to test it out to see if it works for the very first case. Okay? This seems like a bit of an unusual, like what does this establish? It's obviously true for the first case. But as you see later, as I'm going to demonstrate, I hope the first case is a critical part of this deductive logic that I'm going to rely on. So, the first case is um, n equals 1. That's how many, that's the first term that's defined here. There's no uh, zero term in this case because you'd start at negative 1, that's not what I'm after. When n equals 1, the left hand side of this, right, this thing here, is 1 plus, now where do I end? 1. Well, the answer is the last term is, is 1, okay? So, the left hand side is just 1. The right-hand side, what I'm suggesting is true, the right-hand side is 1 squared. But that's the same thing that I started with. That's the left-hand side, right? So therefore, what I've shown is my conjecture, or my statement is another way of saying it, is true for n equals 1. And n equals 1 is significant because it's the first case possible. Um, sometimes it might be n equals 2, or n equals 0, or n equals 4. It kind of depends on what the conjecture is. So, I've got that. Now, secondly, I want to bring some logic into play here. And this bit is a little weird. I've, I've tested, so I actually have some space here. I've tested, now I'm going to make an assumption. I'm going to assume that my statement is actually true for some particular value, some arbitrary value. So I need a, I need a pronumeral here. Okay. Most people choose K. Okay. So I'm going to assume the statement is true for some arbitrary value, okay. n equals K. Now if that were the case, what would this look like? Well, the left hand side would be 1 plus 3 plus 5 all the way up until, until what? K. Yeah, 2 k minus, k minus 1. That's the k odd number. 2k minus 1. What will the right hand side look like? K squared. Yep, there it is. That's what I'm substituting in. So what I'm thinking is, well, what if this is true? What if I can assume that it's true? On the basis of this, here comes the logic, right? What I now want to prove is that if it's true for this value, 
I think I can use logic, deductive logic, to prove that it's true for the next statement, which is the k plus 1 statement. So I'm going to try and prove now that the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. Okay? This is what I'm going after. Okay? So I'm about to write something that I don't know is true yet. So I'm going to write this. RTP required to prove. Now, what would the left-hand side look like for k plus 1? It's going to start the same way. Do you agree? It's still going to go 1 plus 3 plus 5 and so on. Where will it end? Hmm. Now, remember, the kth odd number is 2k minus 1. How do you go from one odd number to the next? You're, you're always adding 2, aren't you? Right? So if this is the kth odd number, then the k plus 1th odd number will be this plus 2. Do you agree with that? That's 2k plus 1, right? Okay, now I'm about to write that down, but for reasons that will become clearer in a second so my deductive logic will make sense, I'm also going to include that term. Because the kth odd number is also in my series. Do you agree with that? And then here is the k plus 1th odd number. Um, you can apply that logic to get 2k plus 1. Alternatively, you could have said, where does this come from? It just comes from putting k plus 1 into the last term, right? That guy is 2k plus 1, take away 1. Do you agree? Like, that's 2k plus 2, take away 1, which is 2k plus 1. Are you happy? So I could have thought about it, oh, it's just 2, 2, 2, 2. Or I could just put it back into the formula I started with. Okay, that is the left-hand side. What's the right-hand side? According to my conjecture, what does it look like? Yeah, that. Oh, and then that's all? Okay, all right. So, this is what I already know to be true. This is what I'm assuming, right? I don't know whether it's true or not, but I'm like, what if it is? And this is what I want to try and prove. So just like every other proof you've ever done, I'm going to start with the left-hand side. It looks like this. So you could just copy-paste. That's a plus. And you'd get this. Now, here's the cool thing, though. Remember, over here we assumed that it's true for n equals k. Like, that means that all of this stuff should be k squared. But I have all of this stuff in this line I'm trying to prove. Do you see that? Right? Look, here it is. Right there. That's all of that stuff in my assumptions. So I'm going to do a substitution. All of this vanishes down into k squared. If my assumption is true, plus the k plus 1 odd number. Okay? Now because I've just done something here that's like, where, where did that come from? Answer, it came from there. We say, by assumptions, that didn't come from nowhere. It came from a statement I made. Yeah. But look at this guy. What is this guy? It's, it's a perfect square, right? It's the thing I was after. It's the right hand side. Okay? So, so, if it's true for one, sorry, if it's true for a term, right, whichever one I want, then it will also be true for the next one. If it's true for this one, that means it should be true for the one after that, and true for the one after that. And, and and on and on and on. Okay? But, and here's the clincher, right? Where did I start? Where did I start? I started and said, hey, you know what? My conjecture is true for the first allowable value. This one here, right? So now if I put in, if I said, well, how about k equals 1? What does this mean? If it's true for k equals 1, it'll be true for k equals 2. And then if I put 2 back in here, if it's true for 2, then it'll be true for 3, and on, and on, and on. Okay? So what have I established? Uh, therefore, the statement is true for n equals k plus 1 if, and only if, it's true for n equals k. Because I kind of assume that as I would. Okay? So, so just look, right? Now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, no, I don't have an infinite, <laughs> I don't have an infinite series of dominoes, okay? But what I've just established is, I picked out, I picked out any domino, right? And I said, well, how about that one? 
okay? Oi. If I can make that one fall, then according to this deductive logic, the next one should fall too. And the next one after that. And the next one after that. But then I've gone ahead and said, right at the beginning, guess what? I can push over the first domino, the n equals 1, or n equals 0, or whatever happens to be the first value, right? So, hopefully my deductive logic was good enough. I'm ready to finish off. Therefore, when I was at school, when I was at school, at this point, you had to write a tiny little essay that explained everything I just said to you about the dominoes and the K and the K plus 1, etc, etc, etc. But, um... I don't go to school. Well, I'm not studying at school anymore, even though I'm still in a school. So what you're expected to write here, to tie this all up in a neat bow, is to say, therefore, everything that you wanted to set out to prove at the beginning is true by the principle of mathematical induction. That's what this thing is. It's different. Did you delete it? Oh, I'll send it to you, I'll send it to you, it's okay. Say it over again. It's different from everything else you've ever seen, right? Now, thankfully, we can confirm this conjecture, right? Of course, it doesn't just come from nowhere. It doesn't just come from here. What is the sum of an AP, guys? What is the sum, like, in general? A on two, N on two. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say you pair them up, so there are N on two points. Yeah, plus and minus one. Okay, so and you could do your first and last term if you like, which would also work. There are n terms in this. It's the first n odd terms. What's the first term? One. Two plus. Uh, what's the common difference? Two. Right. So you say n on two. Okay, what am I getting in here? Two plus. Two n minus two. Cancel. 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 And square. Woo! Okay. So, here's what's really, really amazing though. It's like, yeah, we did all this, it's nice, whatever. But I could have done all of this without mathematical induction. You, you could. Okay. Put an AP formula on that. Or a GP formula. Or any other formula you like. It will defy all of your formulas until you can use mathematical induction because there is a clear pattern, okay? If you have, now a lot of people say, this is a bit weird, this is a bit silly, right? Like, if you know from the beginning what you think the answer is going to be, then what's the point of going to all of this machinery and algebra to prove something which you already know? Well, the answer is, I don't already know. I have a conjecture that is completely different to actually knowing and proving that it's going to be true, right? This is watertight, it's quite amazing, really. You prove something for infinity, right? We can draw diagrams, we can prove stuff for algebra, right? You can say, okay, how do I prove that the angle sum of a triangle is going to be 180 degrees? How do you prove it? Don't you like get different, like, you get a whole angle and then you like, so, like paper, but. <laughs> you draw a parallel line, and then you say, I have alternate angles here, and alternate angles here, so by definition, they equal 180. Now you can do that with geometry. This is true for all triangles, any value of ABC you like. But when you are in this field, this department, going off to infinity, like you're not limited by simple diagrams you can draw. You need bigger tools, you need bigger guns, and that's exactly what mathematical induction is. Okay? Enough? Oh, wow. That was <laughs> This is incredible. Oh, I'm alive. <laughs>